Oh, there's a bit of a... Oh, I was actually just looking at the sail. Catching rainwater, sailing along, not using any diesel. So we are about 24 hours away from Krakatau. So the volcano. Uh, we were there two years ago. Just unbelievable. This is what it looked like then. Everything was actually... Um... Because two thirds of Krakatau, I think, ended up in the ocean. Find a hole in our exhaust pipe, it's only like a thin hole. It's just dangerous the things that are happening at the moment. Welcome to our life on the sea. We are an Australian family that fell in love with the ocean and living on a boat travelling. I'm Sarah and together with Lee and our two kids, Taj and Bella, we are documenting our travels as we sail the world one island at a time. This lifestyle is fun, adventurous, humbling and incredibly challenging, but we wouldn't have it any other way. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to our channel to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. I've been searching in the dark Trusting every clue I found. But the truth is not. Sumatra coastline, squalls, and rain. And not so rough. The sea state's actually gotten a little bit better. The swell's dropped out. Um, the wind's dropped out a bit too. Generally, the nights here um, are a lot more demanding. You, um, Get the squalls come through and bring up the 50 knots. But today it's just wet, not a lot of wind. We're down to like six knots of wind. We've got a bit of current because we're still doing five knots. We were up around seven knots before and we had about 15 knots or 12 knots. A couple more days of this and we'll be there. Are you sure all rugged up there, Captain? Oh. Last time he came up this coast, he was in a wetsuit. Yeah. <laughs> So we're out of water and it's raining, we don't like to run the generator in the rain. And there's all this water coming out of the sky. And because Lee is the super clever dude that he is, he's hooked up a catching device and we're filling our tanks as we speak. There's a lot of surface area there to catch the rain. Oh, was a bit of a... I was actually just looking at the sail and there was... Like the sail bag was down a bit and I noticed that because we've flaked the sail, it's just like a big reservoir of water up there. I didn't want to drain it too quick, but I just used like our water maker hose. Oh, I just stuck our little hose in there. And uh, it's just catching all the water that's, was collecting all the water that's been caught off the main. And it's just been pouring away all day long. We'll have full tanks before we know it. So good. Catching rainwater, sailing along, not using any diesel. Feels real nice. One thing I'll look at on our next boat is catching water. Even though you can make it, if you can catch it, it's just, you know, you less fuel, a little bit more of a green footprint, you know? You Especially when we're in the it. tropics, so yeah, there's so yeah. much rain. So much rain and it's like, we have done it in an emergency. We've cleaned our cockpit and actually used here to catch water, but it's just not the cleanest, obviously. We don't really... Yeah, but it also doesn't catch a lot. And it doesn't catch a lot. Unless it's bucketing. This is a great idea. It's just unbelievable. We were here in late October 2018, and just eight weeks after our visit, this volcano, Krakatau, erupted big time and caused a tsunami that had a tragic effect nearby, killing hundreds of people. This is what it looked like then. And this is what it looks like now, two years later. 
It definitely isn't as spectacular, but the surrounding islands are pretty beautiful. Everything is so green and lush with black sand beaches that are full of pumice stones. Perfect to remove dead skin from your feet. We're going to Jakarta, it's going to be our last one for a while. <laughs> We pulled anchor and headed off. We had 85 nautical miles to get to Jakarta, where we could finally check Catalpa into Indonesia. We've been here before, and we wanted to make sure that we were doing this part of our passage in the daytime, as it's a super busy section of water. We had about 10 knots on the beam and we were sailing along nicely. Back at internet reception, this is all the captain does. Are you keeping watch there, babe? Just on your device? You'd think it's the kids, but... You need to pay attention, mate. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see very well, there's a bit of a glare on the iPad, but this red guy is us. And all those little green dots are ships, are the boats. And uh, yeah, we're about to come into some high traffic areas for ships. As we're coming around to Jakarta, we didn't want to do this at night, hence why we stopped last night or yesterday. So, coming into the big smoke. It's closer in real life, but there's a ship. Can't really change course, but we think we're fine. Lee thinks we're fine, so we're fine. All right, Cap. We've just come into a very busy part of the world for ships, ferries, there's boats going every which way. This is why we wanted to do this part of the passage in daylight. We're, we're closer than we like to be, but he came up behind us. Wind's on our, like, up aft. So we couldn't really do much when we were going to pull the sails in. We were going seven knots, so we don't really like to <laughs> change course when we're getting good time. The wind's slightly on our port, so I really need to we really need to go closer to him, but you know, that that's probably not the best move. <laughs> they say might has right. I'll agree with that. This guy passed and we continued weaving our way through the ships and ferries. That afternoon, the wind picked up to 30 knots and we hadn't reefed the sails. Let's just say it got a lot hectic, but we managed to reef the main. and continue on until we found a place to pull in for the night. Whoa, other way. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Drop pick for the night. Have a sleep. Have a, have sleep. a drink, have a relax, mate. Wake up, do it all again tomorrow. Yeah. The next morning we headed off and had 25 nautical miles to go. To put up our mainsail, I drive Catalpa into the wind. The boys go on deck and pull the sail up the mast. We don't have self-tailing winches, so it takes at least a couple of us to pull up the sails. Six 
close. A bit close for comfort. It's all anchored up. But can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be scary. Let's not forget the exhaust pipe that kept bursting as we went along. We had wind and managed to sail most of the time, but when we had to run the engine, we were reminded that we had a problem that could have been quite dangerous. Blowing a hole in our exhaust pipe, it's only like a thin hole, and uh, a mist of salt water and CO2 is coming out. Scared the little daylight out of the engine with an exhaust. So the gas is Alright, so I've found a bit of self amalgamating pretty reasonably sort of thickness tape. Just wrap that up and then I put some duct tape around it. The wind guides have heard us and uh, we had the motor on because there was no wind and we had this issue and then Bella just yelled out and said we're doing six and a half knots so Woohoo we got wind we got wind because we can't really motor it's just like salt going everywhere. But that's alright it'll be enough just to motor into the marina that tape up. So fingers crossed we keep the wind for the next 30 mile and um, get that sorted in Jakarta. And I think we should be able to find what we need there. We have a headache. Some of us have got a bit of a headache on the boat and I don't know because I don't usually get headaches and I'm wondering whether it was the exhaust actually leaking the, um, into the cabin that's made us feel, or a few of us feel a bit funky. So it's really scary. Um, because um, people can die from this and um, yeah, we're going to have to uh, look at this properly because it's just dangerous. Oh, we just had a little friend come on board, Catalpa. Oh. oh. Hi. I don't know what he is, but he's, he's tired. He looks so exhausted. Are you okay? He's shutting his eyes. I don't know if he's dying or whether he's just exhausted. He come in real hot. I've got to be careful as a boat in front of me, darling. So we're at 10 nautical miles away from Jakarta. We've got a new little crew member. I'm not sure what's wrong with her, but she had a little bit of water. She just seems really exhausted, so. Wrapped her up and she's just chilling. We're just hoping there's not too much in this storm. Sailed the whole day, because we don't have an engine. Yeah, we sort of had to. <laughs> Lucky the winds were with us. Lucky we had wind. So we had great winds. We were sailing. We were going like six to seven to eight knots. And then just all of a sudden, the wind turned around. Now it's on our nose. So we've got I don't know, about eight nautical miles to go. Hopefully the engine stays together long enough to get there. Do you think we'll be right, Captain? How fast do we go? Uh, three knots. Three? I mean, we're not going to get there. We're not going to get there. Ah, oh, we were going so well. We were only like an hour away. Now we're three hours away. We arrived just after dark and anchored outside the marina. This boat today <laughs> flew on to Catalpa and um, I didn't know if it was a baby or, or what, but I put a little post on Instagram and somebody answered because I said, what is it? What should I do? I fed it water. Um, should I feed it? And she drank a little bit of water off my finger. not real lively but someone said try fruit so I just got a little bit of dragon fruit. <laughs> it's the only fruit I've got. She's not real interested. She started to perk up a bit after some water and plenty of rest. <laughs> Pooped herself. She's my little buddy now. I think she's okay. 
Maybe she's coming to life. Maybe she thinks that's the sun and it's morning. Yeah, I know. That's fine. So our little friend just left. <laughs> she just came to life and then uh, I was sitting here and she just flew off. So she just needed some water and a little bit of love, maybe some rest. She was probably just exhausted. Um, note to anybody who's out there, they don't like dragon fruit. Birds don't like dragon fruit. Oh. I'm glad she's okay, but I kind of wanted to look after her for a little bit longer. She just flew off into the darkness, I hope she lives. <laughs> oh well. So just pulled anchor from outside the marina and we're just heading into Jakarta Marina. Alright, we're arriving into the marina now. It's um, 2.5 metres under us, we've had to wait for high tide. So Batavia Marina in Jakarta and like usual, the Taufa in tight spots in a marina, they always give us the best one. I think it's just to test us out. They put anyway. it as far away as possible. <laughs> if anyone knows what it's like with a long keel, quite hard to uh, manoeuvre a boat in small spaces. done. Super easy when those dudes on the dock. Catch the lines and uh, catch them brought it in beautifully. It wasn't a hard docking situation, there was no wind so and it's all worked out pretty damn nicely. And welcome to Jakarta everybody. Customs aboard, nice guy, and he's checked us all out. Our visitors come, and apparently, we just had somebody come and say that we were good to go to go and see the marina office. So, I'm gonna go see them now. Um, if that's the case, we're changed into the country. So, it's been four months or over four months since we've been at a restaurant or eaten out off the boat anywhere. So, this is a little bit exciting. I'm so excited, can't you tell? 